I think the thought prompt just around how do we come down from a really big season and especially with Pride being in person this year, I think that it's to be expected that there'll be some shifts in feelings. What do I have to look forward to now? Um, and I think it's a good opportunity to be able to think about what it is that you're kind of wanting to take with you. So a lot of times we can feel that after the holidays too, um, whatever holidays you celebrate, just because there's a lot of building up toward it and then kind of like a happy new year type situation. And then I, okay, now it's really cold and there's not a ton to look forward to. Um, only right now it's really hot <laughs> and then we don't have as much to look forward to. So I think it's, it's thinking about it from the lens of what is it you want to take with you? What is it that you feel proud of during your pride season that you want to take with you throughout the rest of the year? And then how do you access resources for self-care? So that way you can continue to move forward and take with you the things that did motivate you. Um, there also might be some need for processing and finding additional support and figuring out how you want to integrate the feelings that you are having. And I think that makes a lot of sense and there's a lot of resources available to you for that. So hopefully we will also be able to provide some of those resources. As a clinician, what do you feel like some of those resources should be? Mm -hmm. What would be your top four? Mm -hmm. my, my primary um, objective in life is to help cultivate, help in my life is to have healthy relationships. And then I would like to be able to extend whatever it is I've learned that kind of works within that realm um, so that other people can have healthy relationships. So I think having the mindset around maybe evaluating what is going on with in your relationships around this time of year is actually not a bad thing to do and to really think about how you want to translate feelings of belonging um, into cultivating a very close-knit community and if you don't have that to not um, get too hung up on the fact that you don't have it right now but to kind of start small and think about ways that you can start to bridge out um, within that. I think from another resource standpoint, so like really figuring out, you know, I guess number one would be figuring out relationships. Number two might be um, where do I need support? And this one can be kind of tricky because I think sometimes we don't always know where we need support. So that actually might like shine a light back onto the first one. If you're not sure where you might need support or growth, um, you can ask the people who know you best. Even if they don't know your queer self best, uh, depending on your timeline for coming out, they might have still been a history friend or a family member who still knows the core of you and your personality and could probably shed some insight around what it is that you might want to work on. And asking them what it is that they see would be a really helpful way to go. Because um, a lot of times, and especially within the queer community, I think we are really apt toward saying, I'm fine. And you might not be fine. And that's okay. Um, it also might be that you had a pride season that you're not um, proud of for whatever reason. Um, no assumptions here, but that's a possibility. Just given so many facets within um, the ways in which that can be expressed. And so it could be a season two of kind of saying like, I'm not okay, but I will be. And um, so really kind of establishing that and then finding the supports that you need in order to help you continue going and also to be able to see things from a different vantage point would be really helpful. Um, I think establishing new rhythms is really beneficial after coming off of any big season. I mean, that could be a trip to Europe or, um, a really intensive season at work. It could be pride season, um, the holidays, it could be a lot of different things. Um, but I think that figuring out your anchor points throughout the year can help you to feel less disoriented when those things come to an end. And so it allows you, even if you're not a person who tends to look very far ahead, to kind of recenter and come back to the things that are really helpful for you. 
knows what's the name for, but. That's okay. 